Well, Andrew, I don't know about you, but I've had more fun just taking the go-kart ride on the top of Sun Life Stadium than ever I've had in a whole month. This is incredible. You almost didn't make it up here with your weight, though, Alex. I know. I almost fell off the back a couple times, but that's okay. It's all about safety here at the U.S. Drift Circuit King of County Line Road second annual competition. We're coming to you right now from Car Show Television. I don't know about you, Andrew, but I already smell like a burnt tire. Oh, man. The, the rubber is just in the air here. It's, it's all over the place. The smell of smoke. This is what it's all about. High revving engines, drifting. What an exciting culture we got here today. And it's all coming to you right now on Car Show Television. Coming up next on Car Show Television. Television.com. I'm Kim Carter. This is Alex. Of course, you guys know him. You guys know me. We're right now, Sun Life Stadium, U.S. Trick Circuit, King of the County Line, round two, fall race, all the excitement, right on the track. It doesn't get any better than MarshallTelevision.com. With Kim Carter coming at you right now. I'm Chris, the U.S. Drift Circuit. We're here today, uh, Sunday, at Sun Life Stadium. We're doing our second round of King of County Line, round two. Uh, we have two tracks going on, um, to a solo class, which is like more of the amateur guys, and a pro class, which they get crazy, and they do uh, tandem style drifting, which is two cars on the track at the same time. And they, uh, you know, they go out and get crazy wild, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We got a lot of stuff here for the kids. We got a little uh, RC drifting for um, pretty much all ages. We got a little uh, rap hip hop stage over there going on. We have a live band. Uh, it's pretty much just fun for the whole family, and we're going to do these uh, four times a year here at Sunlight Stadium, so be sure to check it out. He's not a coolie. He's the track manager here. All right, my name is Tim Murphy. I am... Uh the, I guess, track official you can call me. I'm the one that is in charge of organizing the drifting end of this, the judging, the point system, the track layouts, the clipping zones, going over the driver's meeting, explaining everything to all the drivers. I'm, I'm pretty much, this is my show, and Chris handles the rest of the garbage, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, today we're out here at the Sun Life Stadium. This is our second time out here with US Drift Circuit. Um, me and my brother also helps me out. We own Drift Sessions, which are in conjunction with the uh, U.S. Drift Circuit to run the events over here to put on a competition for the uh, local drivers. Um, today we're out here just with different weather today. It's been a real challenge, especially for spectators. With the drivers, we've had to go from rain to dry to rain, and, and it's really been throwing the drivers for loops. So today we've seen some inconsistency with the driving for some of the drivers. Some of the drivers that are more seasoned, you can see it doesn't affect them too much, but for the most part, uh, it's still putting on a great show, and we're having a good time here. Okay, what we're looking for in drifting as an event like this where you have a pro class, where we have tandem, what we're going to do is we, we give these guys a, some time to practice, get a feel for the track. While they're getting a feel for the track, we're adjusting it to what we feel will either make it more challenging or, or make it a little easier for the guys to flow through the track um, smoothly. Now, we don't want to make it too easy because we got to judge them through clips. We put different markers throughout the track and each zone, the, as a driver goes through it, they need to get as close as possible through this zone to the certain, following the race line, I guess is the best way to explain it. And we judge them accordingly how far off they are, how many corrections they make to try to keep in that race line, whether they're pulling the e-brake too long, uh, are they straightening the wheel, doing too much steering, too many corrections. We want a nice, solid drift with decent angle, good speed, and of course smoke is always, uh, you know, it's always a plus. So we took it all these things together and then we come up with a score, we get a qualifying, we put them in a grid. Now once the qualifying is set up and we have them graded up, they go one on one. This is a, a cat and mouse uh, kind of scenario where you have a car that's leading, a car that's chasing. 
The guy in the front that's leading, his job is to put down a solid race line, but try to put as much distance between him and the car behind him as possible without spinning out or making too many errors. The guy in the back, he's trying to be, he's using that lead car as a mobile clipping point. His job is to mirror image that lead car. And if he can do it properly and keep enough uh, proximity and where he's like right on putting a lot of pressure on the lead car, then that's going to give an advantage to the chase car. And then we, we switch roles. So then the lead car will chase and then the chase car will lead and they go around until until we get a winner. Sometimes you'll see that there are less uh, seasoned drivers with a good chase driver. We'll put pressure on that. That guy has less experience and he'll get nervous and you'll see him crack under the pressure and you'll see him spin or make some major errors. So that's what we look for. And then we just work our way through the grid and at the end we get our top three. We have three judges, and our judges, judging system, we separate the track into three different zones. That makes it easier for the judges to focus. Instead of having to focus on the whole track, they're just responsible for one zone. And as the cars go through the zone, each judge will designate, okay, the lead car had the advantage in this zone. Now, if the next, how, next part of the next zone that the uh, chase car starts to catch up, starts to put more pressure, now the chase car has an advantage. And then we work it between uh, both laps when they switch up, and then depending on which car get, which uh, driver gets the most votes through both turns will determine the winner. Now sometimes you get it's too close, it's even. We do one more time and we've had to do three one more times just to keep pushing them and it comes down to like you know uh, last man standing almost for the most part. And, but we also separate the judges to three different areas of track as well so you gotta the track is covered. There's a judge you can see just about every part of the track. What we, we don't look for, we don't add points. What we do is it's a deduction. You can have the craziest entry, but we're not gonna give you any points for it. Now, we're gonna take off for every mistake that you make. And we, that's why we make the track, we don't make it really easy for you to, to attack, because it's really gonna separate the men from the, from the boys on there. So we like, of course the crowd loves the backward entry, loves the crazy smoke, but as a judge, especially during qualifying, a lot of times it's going to hurt yourself because you know you, you want to put a solid run. You want to put a distance between you and the guy behind you, or you want to put a lot of pressure on the guy in front of you. So our judges, we're not, we're not, and we've all been seasoned. We've seen everything. So you're not going to impress us in any crazy way. There's nothing you're going to do that we haven't seen. So the judges have all been drivers. We always look for uh, judges that have driving experience because they know they can relate to the driver what's going on. It's pretty solid. We very rarely have an issue where there's an argument. It's usually pretty clear cut. And the drivers know ahead of time. If you straighten out, it's a zero, you know, it's a zero through that zone. If you spin, it's a zero. If you hit a clip and you knock it out of its clipping um, box, because we mark little zones around each clip, if you knock it out of there, that's considered you hit a wall. You told your car it's a zero. So in the driver's meeting, we handle all the questions that the drivers might have. So when the judges do their judges, judging, there's really no, they don't have to worry about anything. For the most part, it's clear cut. They already know what to expect. Ready. We're going to go over to talk to some of the drivers. We're going to find out right from them a little bit about the technology and what's being done here with drifting to give you guys a little bit idea of how it's done. Ride here. 
see how, how it does here. My name is Alec McEwen. My name is Mindy McEwen Paltridge, and I'm from Margate, Florida. All right, uh, drifting for me has kind of been something that really, uh, you know, it started as something really small, and uh, it actually started originally just with a YouTube video, you know, that I saw online, and uh, quickly, quickly escalated into something that I realized was going to start changing my life in, in kind of a, a really great way. Uh, and um, throughout my marriage. Things didn't go right, and we ended up getting a divorce. And I was stuck with two teenage boys and trying to keep them busy. So one of the things I told them is to choose a passion. And one of my boys chose one passion, and another one of my boys chose drifting. Um, growing up, I really was kind of discouraged by my dad specifically. My mom was always there for me, but um, my visitation time over with my father, every time I was out there during the summer, I just noticed that whatever it was as a kid, whatever dream I had, you know, he'd kind of go out of his way to crush it. And um, at the time, the very last time I spent around him was about three years ago. And um, Around that time, I really got into drifting, and it started, you know, getting in my mind to something that I wanted to do, and really start taking to heart with it. And like everything else, you know, of course, said, "Well, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, you don't know how to do it. You don't know anything about how to get into it in the first place, and you don't have the money." And uh, then I started realizing that, you know, maybe that's maybe he's right. And as always, admitting to it. So, in order to keep my teenage boy moving on and not getting out into the wrong things in life. I looked into drifting. I had never heard of it before and the first thing you do as a parent is see how safe it is and found that drifting was one of the safest racing activities that is out there. And the thing that I absolutely loved about drifting is that it is more of an art form than it is a race. Right. Where so um, back here in Florida where I live, I was originally born in San Diego, grew, uh, raised here with my mom. And I would always go to the racetrack. Anytime I saw that there was a drift event, I would always want to go there watching. Until eventually, one driver picked me up and he said, hey, listen, I noticed that you're always around here. And I'll tell you what, if you really want to learn how to drift, go get this car, which in this case was a 240SX, the same car I'm driving now. And he said, show up in my shop and I'll teach you everything you need to know. And all I wanted in return was uh, my full commitment. I ended up buying Alec a old, um, used, obviously, uh, 1995 240SX and the rule was is that he had to build the car himself. If he was going to learn his trade then then he needed to do all the work. So he ended up uh, working with uh, Tear Tech up in West Palm Beach, uh, Harry Tavola, who is a, a very good drifter in the community here and Harry walked him through gutting the car and, and keeping it with stock but stock and driftable. And since then, it really gave me the opportunity to kind of go out there and do something that, you know, I had in my head that I wasn't capable of doing it, I wasn't talented enough, I didn't have the money. And very quickly I realized that with the help of this driver that 
I, it was all very possible and very simple. All you really need is the support. And drifting quickly became, became something that it wasn't an obsession or it wasn't a passion or a hobby, but it was something that actually was part of my life in general, not something I could simply shake off. And um, I slowly started taking it to heart more and more until now I'm completely committed in the motorsport and I love doing it. And the long story behind it is that basically I was told and I admitted it to myself that I could not do something like this. And a lot of people have been that, that know my story have kind of followed me and realized that it is possible to do just about anything. And even people who don't have a lot of money, I came in fourth place last UF Drift Circuit event with a na naturally aspirated four-cylinder motor, um, the KA the stock motor that came in this car. It's something that you know I'm not about to go out. I'm in high school. I'm 17. I'm going to be a senior next year, and. I don't party, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I do any of that because anytime I have off from studying, I want to be in the car, I want to be working on the car. So, um, all I can say is thank you Chris Jackson, thank you Harry Travola for really taking him under your wing and, and he's a great drifter because of the drift community and Tim and Ben and everybody who's helped him people who don't think they can do drifting. I have people that I talk to in California, you know, kids 13, 14, and I tell them all, like, if you want to start drifting, all you have to do is want it. The judges are looking for uh, drivers to be going according to certain categories, and those categories are speed, angle, line, and style. Um, you want to have proximity as well to the driver in front of you if you're chasing him, and you really want to try and stay on his door. Also, you want to have tons of angle while you're on his door, and if you can get more angle than him, that's great. You also have clipping points spread out around the track, and you want to try and get as close to those as possible without hitting them, or you're going to get a point deduction. Um, the fact that it is a judge sport, they re it, you really do have to go out there and realize that drifting is more about how talented you are as a driver. Um, my tire bill, that's a great question because I know there are a lot of drivers that are on driver plans and even then spend tons of money. Um, luckily I have a sponsor uh, named Friendly Tire and uh, that's actually a local company that's right by my house and um, they're a used tire company so I do get used tires for free. Um, but that's not going to happen very much longer because we do have more power in the car now so we are going to be looking to get brand new tires and I can imagine it's probably going to be a couple thousand dollars every event or so. But. Um, but yeah, tires are definitely something that is really important and you do have to have money for that unless it's, you know you can do what I do. And the grassroots is basically jumping into dumpsters and finding used tires and then just mounting them on your drift car. So. Welcome to Car Show Television. Georgia just moved to Miami about three months ago. I drive a 1995 Nissan 240SX with an LS2 power plant. Uh, makes about 375 to the tires, mild camshaft headers and normal swap pieces. You know I originally started when I was 16 years old. I was doing a lot of um, rally racing with junk cars in the woods. That's where I, I learned my driving skills. Then I progressively moved up and now I'm, I'm here. Uh, you know my car my car is real loud. Probably the loudest one on the track. It's uh, straight exhaust, no mufflers. Really gets people excited with the V8, you know, full throttle, smoke pouring out the back. Um, you know, I try to put consistent runs down with fast initiations. I'm really known for driving fast, and that's, you know, that's really what I like to do. From a couple of car lovers who started Car Show Television, we are proud to serve all the other car lovers in South Florida through our incredibly exciting online brand, carshowtelevision.com. carshowtelevision.com is your one-stop resource for your car culture news and events all over South Florida. Check out our calendar for updates on all car shows throughout the month. 
You can also see clips and footage from our latest events. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get all the latest info sent directly to your inbox. We are really excited to be South Florida's premier news gathering organization for all things related to cars in our area, and we want carshowtelevision.com to be your go-to web destination for car events all over South Florida. If you have a car club based here in South Florida, let us know and we'll list it for free. Do you have a body shop that specializes in interesting cars? Be sure to inquire about having your shop listed on carshowtelevision.com, complete with video of your facilities. To inquire about advertising, call Alex at 561-331-2CAR. See you at the next car show. Hey, welcome back. This is Car Show Television. This is Andrew and Alex. We're going to be out there with Bragging Rights today. They're, not only are we having a drift competition here, but Bragging Rights has actually got a car show going on. So we're going to check out some of the cars at the show.